I've been considering many, many different cars as daily drivers and alongside the Exige 380. Morning, today is an exciting video. I've been talking about this car loads. So when I dropped my Clio off, so I had, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. I have had in the last probably 15 months on that a Lotus Elise uh, Club Racer, which I sold. To replace that with a Lotus Exige 380, which I've ordered, which is on its way. <laughs> it's so quick. And in the meantime, between all of those, I've had a Megane GT Renault and a Renault Clio RS Trophy, which I used as daily drivers. Both of those have gone as well. So currently, I am left in the position where I've ordered an Exige 380, which is quite a hardcore car, with no daily driver alongside of it. I've been considering many, many different cars as daily drivers, and when I dropped off the Clio RS 220 Trophy last at Renault, I had a long conversation in the car with Josh, a friend of mine, and we were talking about potential daily driver replacement. The Alpine A110, or the prototype at the time, which it was, was talked about in that conversation. And then I came to Geneva a few days ago and saw what is now named the A110 in real life for the first time and completely fell in love. So now that I'm back in Geneva to see my family and do a bit of work, I figured why not come back and this is the main reason why I came back. To look at this car, to have a proper think about whether it could work as a daily driver financially and just with my life in general and see if it's possible to even buy one. So, first of all, let me give you some stats. So it's a four cylinder engine. This car has 252 horsepower and weighs 1100 kilos, wet weight. So it's really, really quick. It's sort of in the Porsche Cayman and Lotus Exige price range and slightly slower than the Lotus, slightly slower than the Porsche as well. But it's sort of in that sort of range of cars you could use. It's much more usable than an Exige would be, which is what makes it as appealing. Despite its weight, they've managed to keep a lot of creature comforts. It's got a radio, it's got uh, heating, it's got AC, it's got a good sound system, it's got comfortable seats, it's got all these things, uh, which I know the Exige has too, but the Exige is quite hardcore. It's loud, carbon all over the place, really hard seats, and just not quite the car also. In 380 form, you want to put too many miles on which is why I'm considering getting something like this. I think this would work really well as a daily driver because of all of the creature comforts it's got. It's got two boots, one at the back, one at the front because it's a mid-engined car. Rear wheel drive, obviously, it's not available in manual, which is what I ordered my Exige in, which is another reason it would be good for daily driving because you could just put it in uh, automatic mode, dual clutch gearbox, you could just go for miles and miles and miles. The seats are much more comfortable. And in general, I think it would just work really well uh, to be able to poodle around. It's not very low. You can get it over speed bumps and little things like that that do make a difference. Aesthetically, it's got throwbacks to the old A110, like the lights at the front of it, uh, just the general shape of the car, the central exhaust at the back, which does open up under sport mode and race mode and all these things. The exhaust opens up and you get more pops and bangs on upshifts, I've been told. And overall, I think they've nailed the outside. What I would do personally is order it in the blue color, which you guys saw in the thumbnail, put some big black wheels on it, lower it slightly and put a small wing. I think it would look fantastic if you did that. Tint it obviously because that's what it would need to. But if you did that, I think it would look really good and genuinely be usable as a daily driver. Now financially, it's quite a lot cheaper than the Exige. So the Exige 380, once you've put a lot of options on it and you've gone through Lotus exclusive, it's above the 100,000 euro range mark. I mean, that's really if you go all out with the spec, which stupidly I've ended up doing. So you're talking sort of much more expensive. This is 59,900 euros in premier edition form, which is a limited form to 1955 units, which is the a little bit of a throwback to the Alpine history because that's when Alpine released their first car. So they're limiting the premier edition to 1,955 units, all sold out. I've already been on the phone with people at Alpine seeing if someone will drop out because I think this is the one to get. The Premier Edition will hold its value better and it's also got every single option. 
if you don't get a premier edition you're talking about delivery next year which I'm not too interested in so effectively what I want is I want to be able to get an early premier edition car in the blue color and if somehow I manage to wangle my way into that I think I'll try and make it happen because it's within price range it looks fantastic and it's exactly what I'm looking for let me show you the interior now so you understand why I think you could use this as a daily okay inside of the car the first thing that is the highlight for me are these seats so I'm gonna put an overlay of them now so you can see them quite clearly you've got this quilted diamond stitching which looks really nice Alcantara center to the seats as well and it just they feel really comfortable good angle to them they're fairly adjustable manual seats not electric the electric seats will come when the main production car non premier edition will come along but they weigh more these are only 13 kilos per seat so I really, really like these. They feel good for road trips, good for daily use while still giving you that sporty feel because I don't necessarily want to get a daily. What the Clio RS made me feel is that I clearly really like my daily slightly sporty. So this would be the perfect mix between something that's very usable but something that also excites you every day and gives you, you know, when you walk up to it in a car park, you look at it and go, oh yeah, that looks nice. Or it sounds nice, it's got sporty seats, it makes you feel quite like you're in a sports car basically, which is what I want every single day. It's got carbon fiber all over the place, on the air vents, on the center console, on the rear of the seats. There's carbon fiber really everywhere, which again adds to that sort of flariness, that extra feel, which is absolutely lovely. There is then also the really nice leather and Alcantara steering wheel, which really just feels, it's weird how certain steering wheels feel sporty and others don't, so it's got a hard, sort of thick feel to it, which makes you feel like you're in a sports car. Flappy paddles, these I'm not a massive fan of because they're the same paddles straight out of the Clio, which is uh, not ideal because it does make you feel like, okay, you can still tell it's from the Renault group even though Alpine has been launched as a completely new brand. You've got a funky sport button here which does remind me of Ferrari, which you can choose between three modes on. So you've got normal road, normal mode, sport mode, and then race mode. And the differences apparently are just the sound it makes. It changes also in here. You've got the instrument cluster, which is all one big screen and that gets completely changed when uh, you go between the modes but overall it's very very usable you could just put it in D on this little selection panel right here which is actually the same design as you have in Maserati's and Ferrari so I am a massive fan of this because it gives you that little aspect uh, of Italian sports car kind of flair you got all of these buttons up here which remind me of actually Gallardo's so again I really like this and then you got the screen here where you get all your information your turbo pressures and loads of different things your brake your traction control everything is controlled through there overall the materials feel really nice of course there are a few plastics here and there but this being you know not a 100 200,000 euro car that's to be expected but it feels really nice apparently the sound system is really good I don't like the way the actual speakers look but apparently they sound really good so I guess that's what matters and I think that through this car having really comfortable seats an automatic gearbox very air interior two boots and quite a usable engine it's not like you've got a massive v8 the running cost won't be too too high you will be able to actually use this pretty much every day so let's hop outside people are waiting to get inside and I'll just round the video off that's that then that's my tour of the Alpine a110 you're learning with me you're effectively coming on this adventure with me of looking at this car and deciding whether it could work as a daily driver I think it would work really well alongside the Exige 380 they would look really cool parked next to each other especially in the specs I'm thinking so that is basically my conclusion on the A110 I think it would be an amazing car if it was just your first sports car or anything like that I would be so honored to be able to have one alongside another car let, or, let alone just have one all together so I'm gonna be making some calls I'm gonna try to make it happen if you guys know of anyone who's got a premier edition who wants to get rid of their slot for a premier edition or anything like that I really really ideally want it to be a premier edition so that's what I'm going for I'll keep you guys updated on if I have any news on that but for now my new daily driver I'm hoping will be the new a110 premier edition keep updated for more news and I'll see you soon cheers guys thanks for watching please remember to subscribe I'll see you soon bye hey, yo. Quick cap,